Hey everyone, I'm Sarah and today we are doing a makeup session for my acrylic painting class which is normally on Thursday nights um, at 7 p.m. Eastern but I had some stuff going on on Thursday so we are doing a reschedule for today at 2. So um, I am having a little bit of problems with my Discord server. Normally what you would be able to do is go see the reference photo of what we're going to be doing today which is this right here. I happen to have done this class in the past. So this is my painting that I did um, from the class that we're doing today. Um, so we don't have access to a reference photo until Discord gets the server situation cleared up. Sometimes just certain servers go down. There seems to be at least two that I belong to, mine and another one that are down. So um, that's just the way it is. But uh, normally, if you were to go on Discord, um, there we would actually have a live chat. And that would show up up here. You would actually see my icon as well as anybody else that was on. You'd see their uh, little avatar up there. And they would be live. Um, if you notice right here, this is my Discord server. This is not a link, however. It's just the address. You can either type exclamation point discord in the chat or you can click on my name go to about and there's a button that says discord and those will take you directly to my server um, when you get there if you go to the channel that says reference photo you can see whatever the photo is for the day whether it's a drawing or a painting um, i always put that up the day that i'm going to be doing the lesson um, if it if you are looking to upload your artwork for critique, that would be in the Art Crit channel. And then there's also Stream Chat, which is if you wanted to um, talk to us live. So that's the Discord bit. Normally I would show you that, but like I said, because um, the server is down today, we're just gonna have to do it the old fashioned streaming way. All right, so this is what we're gonna be painting. I'm going to go ahead and move that out of the way and let me go over the supplies. So I've got water, of course, because we, we are doing acrylic painting today, but you always need water to rinse. And I've got paper towels. I have a canvas. I have um, a palette and a palette knife. You can also use like a plastic, you know, like if you have a little plastic knife that comes from, um, you know, a restaurant or something like that, a little to-go container, you can use that. I've got two brushes, a size six round brush and um, a size either 10 or 12 filbert. Filbert just means it's a flat brush that has this rounded top. Um, this is also called a three quarter wash brush. All right. Um, I have a canvas. I use nine by 12 is the size that I use. Um, that would fit into an 11 by 14 frame if you were you know, gonna frame it. Um, and I like to use canvas board because it's flat and it's easier to put into the, um, the pre-made frames that already have like matting and everything in it. These are nice, you can slide them in and they make really excellent gifts. Okay, for paints, I have, I'm, I'm running out, but I have um, phthalo blue, cadmium yellow medium, and naphthol crimson but if you just have a red yellow and blue your primary colors that works fine i also have a um, burnt umber and a titanium white and both of those um it's fine if you do white and brown so if you have a set that has those five colors red blue and yellow and white and brown then that will work okay so First, we're gonna be starting off with our blue. All right. So we're just gonna get pure blue. Now, I will tell you, acrylic is permanent um, when it stains something. So I've put some paper down underneath uh, 
my canvas and normally I would wear an apron as well, but I'm not wearing one today. I'm just going to be careful, but I would highly recommend you wear some kind of clothing you don't mind getting dirty because um, acrylic painting, once it dries, it's very, very difficult to get off. So, okay. So first we need, we're going to use our small brush and we need to get it wet so when you put it in the water you just gently press down and see you can see the bubbles and just push down on both sides and just let all those air bubbles filter out go ahead and you can wipe on the side of um on the side of the cup but don't dry it completely i'm going to get a paper towel and then put my paper towels to the side um, we're going to use the water on our brush to pick up a little bit of blue from the side. We're just, you just come in on the side. Like, so instead of boop, dipping your brush down in the middle, we don't want to do that. We want to just pick some up on the side that mixes the water in a little bit. It makes it a little easier to manipulate. Also, it helps us, it helps prevent paint from going too far up into the brush because if it starts getting in here then you can damage your bristles all right so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to do almost in right in the middle i'm going to do it off to like this the um left a little bit but we're going to do an oval shape for our head and this is just getting the general idea down of what we want so this is our head Okay, I'm gonna need to get a little bit more water. You can see it's starting to dry brush right here where like it's not going smoothly. So you just add a little bit of water to that. Okay, now we're going to do kind of a neck shape. It comes down. And then we're going to do a fat teardrop shape that is just like a pear almost. And see that my, see how it's dry brushing? It's because there's just not enough water. Man, it was like really this blue is really not wanting to go on here. Okay, there we go. Just gotta get that teardrop shape on there. Let me move that up a little bit so you can see. All right, now behind this, we're gonna do kind of a flat, um, it's the top part of the tail. It's gonna be flat across the top and then it's gonna come down along the side of the peacock and it, it will come in just a little bit that. and it doesn't matter how light or dark this is we're just getting the shapes down right now all right then the next thing we're going to do is starting right above the peacock we're going to do some lines almost like the sun rays And see, I'm going onto my paper a little bit. And I'm putting my rays, let's see, I'll get a little closer to my tail. I'm putting my rays probably about an inch apart. These are going to be what our um, we do our eyes on. This just gives us structure for that. And again, those don't have to be perfect or anything like that.
All right, so I'm gonna pick up a little bit more blue and I'm gonna actually start painting in the body of the peacock. And we may have to put more than one coat. And I'm picking up some water too, just so that it's more fluid. Just filling it in. And right now, like I said, I'm just using the pure blue. We're going to actually start mixing some other colors in here shortly. All right, I'm going to take a little bit of white. Oops. Got, some, mine. Got a little bit of crust on it. I'm going to rinse my brush so that I don't contaminate the white with the blue. But while it's still wet, I want to try to pick up some of the, the white. And right in the center of the chest, we're going to start doing like an oval. I'm cleaning off my brush and I'm actually drying it a little bit. And then I'm going to start blending that, blending that out. And what this does is it makes the chest of the peacock more rounded looking. And if you feel like you're picking up too much of a certain color, like too much white or too much blue, then you just rinse your brush and dry it off and start blending again. I'm just doing big circular motions. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of the dark blue. So it's darker up at the top. Okay. Now what we're going to do we're going to get a little bit of red and a little bit of brown. And if you've taken my classes before, then you know where this is going. We're going to make black. So the way to make black is by mixing brown and purple. So what we're going to do, I'm going to take some blue. Some red, mixing those together. And just a tiny bit of brown. We don't need much, just a little bit. Tiny bit of brown. I hardly have any on there. All 
All right. So I'm going to go ahead, get my brush wet, and I'm going to pick up a little bit of this black, and we're going to paint the head black. You can go all the way to the outside of the head. and you're going to come down the neck. Now, it's going to just blend into the blue that's already here. So what we'll do is we'll pick up just a tiny bit of the blue and just brush that on the edge of that. I'm going to clean my brush off. Oops. Get a little bit more of that blue. Clean and dry my brush off and then I can feather it. There, like that. I got some, some paint on my canvas, that's okay. All right, now all of these out here should be dry. So what we're gonna do is we're going to mix some yellow We're going to mix it with just a little bit of white. So I'm going to bring this color. Well, actually, I can probably just put it directly into the yellow because I don't think we use yellow for anything else. I mean, we'll make some orange, but we're going to make it out of the yellow that we make here. So I'm going to mix some white in there. You don't need a whole lot of white. Just enough to lighten it a little bit because... What the white does is the white provides better coverage than the yellow. The yellow is not, it's very translucent. It's not very opaque, which means that you can't uh, see through it as well. I mean, you see through it too well, rather. Excuse me. I'm having some allergy stuff going on. So I apologize for that. All right. Now what we're going to do, we're going to take this yellow that we just made. It's okay if you get a little bit of, if your water's a little blue. It's okay, we're going to pick some of that up. And then we're going to start painting ovals on, the, on our blue line. So I'm going to paint an oval here. And you may have to paint over the oval more than once. I'm going to paint one here. Oops. Sometimes you can paint the ovals like in the middle. Like like they're still on the lines, but they're it's like kind of to the side of one of the lines. Let me get some more water. And some of your ovals can be a little pointy if you want, like they can look a little more like eggs. And I'm trying not to put them right next to each other. See how they're kind of in a, you know, they're, they're sort of catty corner. You can make some bigger or smaller. We want to make some that are going off the page. I 
And we're just going to continue around until we've got all of them covered. But this, these lines help us decide where to turn the ovals because now our, our ovals are going to be more horizontal as they come to the side. And some of them may have more than one on there. Try not to load up the paint too much. Remember, we can always do a second coat. And we'll just, just go, go, go in making our our little ovals. Like I said, make sure some of them go off the page. We don't want all of them to be on the page because that makes it look more realistic. Like the peacock is, you know, spreading out across the entire the entire page. Every once in a while I clean off my brush because when you're just doing solid color like this, a lot of times it can get, um, the paint can start to get up into, you know, the, the um, this part of the brush here. I cannot remember what that's called, but anyway, um, and you don't want that. That is no bueno because that can make your bristles fall out, it can damage your brush. Okay, now we need to do a second coat so that we don't see the blue underneath. And if you're having trouble with your yellow, like still showing through, just add a little bit more white to it. We may have to use our hair dryer today, we'll see. We'll see if I can accomplish this without it. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm just going over with the second coat. Hey, Flex, welcome. Discord is out today for some reason. The server's down. Discord being Discord. It's just as well. Half the time when I try to show everybody what Discord looks like, it um it shuts down OBS, so I don't know. What we're doing right now is we've got our our yellow points on our peacock. And now we're doing a second coat on them. The yellow part of the eye on the peacock, the eyes.
And see how see how the yellow is starting to get up into the brush? That's when I'll wash it off. You know what I forgot to have us do? Before I finish doing this, um, we need to paint the inside of um, the tail. And you can actually even paint over the blue. All right, I accidentally painted on the neck of my peacock. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you how to fix if you accidentally paint somewhere, as long as it's still wet, you just run a little bit of a wet brush, then dry your brush off and pick up, there we go, just pick up the amount that's wet. Chilling and eating, that sounds good. I actually am a little hungry. I'll probably make dinner after this. It'll be a little early for dinner, but I had kind of an early breakfast and I didn't eat lunch, so. So I'm just painting the tail part yellow. What are you eating? Cheese salad baguette. Ooh, that sounds nice. What kind of cheese? I have to ask, I'm a cheese person, I love cheese. By the way, I am covering, trying to cover the blue line as much as possible. We're gonna be repainting blue on there, but we're gonna do it in a different shape. So, all right. So now that I've got that there, now I can go back to putting the second coat on for my, my eyes. Gloucester, very nice. I don't know if I've ever had that. I'm trying to think. Probably not pronouncing it correctly either. My pronunciation of English words sometimes is a little off because, I mean, even Oh, I pronounced it fine? Oh, cool. Well, good. Um, uh, even American English words sometimes, they don't look like they sound. I mean, it's, it's a pain teaching children English, really. Or teaching English as a second language because our rules are just very weird. Okay. All right. So we're good. There's a couple. I'm going to put like a third coat on just because I can still kind of see it, but it's fine because we're going to be doing other colors. It is because it looks like Gloucester is what it looks like. 
All right, I'm gonna do a little bit of a second coat on this inside. That's why I wanted to do it earlier, was because, um, so that way it would be mostly dry when we came to, to do another coat. I'm just picking up the last little bit of yellow. And then we're good. All right, clean that brush off. Okay. All right, so now what we wanna do is we wanna mix this yellow with a little bit of blue. So I'm gonna pick up, now blue goes a long way. So I don't wanna pick up too much. I'm gonna just pick up a little bit. I'm gonna mix it right into this. Like I said, very tiny bit. You're cat sitting at your sister's. You've got the house to yourself with an, a huge TV. I love it. That's awesome. I had the house to myself for the past week. And I just actually picked my mom up this morning. So now I do not have it to myself. Um, this is okay. I do want a little time. I want this to be slightly darker. Just a little. So I'm gonna pick up just a tiny bit more blue. Again, you don't need much. Like, I mean, I barely have anything on there. You'll see how far it goes. Well, maybe you won't, cause I already had it green, but it really goes a long way. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to um, paint around our uh, yellow bits and we're gonna basically be painting the entire thing in, over these blue lines that we did earlier. So this is gonna take a little while so I always surround the yellow part first. And then I start, you know, painting more uh, fervently. Because the thing is, is you don't want to accidentally paint over the yellow. Now, um, you do want to keep a little bit of water on your paint so it makes it go on smoother, especially when you're going around the yellow parts. But then I try to brush it really pretty quickly after I do the yellow part. And the reason why is otherwise then you'll see like a nice big circle. This way at least you're blending it. Like I said, grab some water. And that helps keep it fluid so that you get everything covered. And don't worry if there are some little spots, I'll hold this up so you can see. There's like a couple like little tiny white spots that I didn't catch. We're gonna be doing a lighter green around around the um, yellow spots, like 
in a circle, like, well, you'll see, like a little frame. So don't worry. If you miss a spot, at least if you miss a spot and it's right around your, your yellow eye. All right. Now I'm trying to be careful right as I get to the bird too. Right, so we're just painting away. All right, I do want to edge this bird. So I'm gonna do, oops, my yellow wasn't completely dry so I got a little on my hand. I'm gonna rest my finger. The bird should be pretty dry. And I'm just gonna paint along the edge of the bird. Oh, and I got some yellow right in the middle of the bird. Let me just get all the rest of this green off my brush. And I'll catch that. All right, so there's a little bit of yellow. Oh, okay, good. It wasn't totally dry. It was a little bit of dry paint, so I was worried that it was gonna st stay there, but it didn't. Because otherwise, then I would have had to redo like the blue and the white. Because, you know, it's hard to get that gradient without actually doing the gradient. All right. So I accidentally went over the edge of my bird. So he's just going to be a little thinner than I originally intended. I'm just repainting my line. All right. I'm really trying not to touch this yellow part. So Flex, how long are you house sitting for? Or pet sitting rather? Is it just for the weekend? Home on Tuesday. Well, that's nice. You've got a long weekend. in a big house with a big TV. <laughs> All right. I'm going to actually turn my bird I feel like it'll be a lot easier to do it without trying to get my hand to not touch that yellow part while it dries. It's like a mini holiday. Uh, she has a garden, lives near an excellent park with ducks and stuff. That's awesome. Yeah, that does sound like a little mini holiday. I'm 
Got a free stay, a little bed and breakfast. Of course, you have to make your own breakfast. So maybe it's more like an Airbnb. You're the best cook around, so top quality food. I love it. And you're so modest, too. <laughs> no, I think that's great. If you're good at something, I don't believe in, in false modesty, which I think most modesty is false modesty. I mean, there are some people that genuinely don't know that they're good at things. I mean, there are some things that I've discovered that I was good at that I didn't know. I, like, I just didn't acknowledge it because it, I didn't think that I was. But, um... I feel like that just means you're lacking some introspection because I mean if you uh, know yourself pretty well then you know what you're good at and what you're not good at you know heading to the park for a baking cob and a latte at 9 a.m. what's a baking cob Like a sandwich? Is that a kind of sandwich or something? No, that is nice though. Change up your morning routine a little bit. Be able to just relax and stroll and, you know. Uh, cob is a roll, but rounder and more crusty. Oh, well, I just learned a new thing then because I've never heard of that. That's cool. Cob. All right. So as we get around to this uh, tail feather part, sorry, that took me a really uh, long time to say the rest of that sentence or even the rest of that fragment of a sentence so anyway as we get around to the tail feather part hopefully it's dry because we're going to be making a shape in it we're going to actually put a little bit of fluff to it um, and by the way it's okay if you can still see the blue in some of the places like in between because we're going to be covering it enough where it won't matter too much more important that we get the coverage okay I'm gonna turn this now um, as we do the yellow part uh, I mean uh, as we go around the tail rather what we're gonna do is we're gonna do like kind of um, little humps
and the side doesn't matter as much. I'm still doing the humps, but if you have some parts that are more straight than others, that's okay too. So a Londoner wouldn't know what a cob was. All right. Well, that's good to know. So I, I wouldn't use a word and people looking at me like I'm crazy. Next time I'm in London, which is, you know, probably a while. I don't know though. I should be getting my passport in, in September. And when they, of course, when they lift COVID restrictions, a lot of people are probably going to be traveling. A lot of people are going to be like, get me the heck out of my country. I want to just go travel and see places. I know I'm going to want to, but I will restrict myself because I don't like crowds. So I don't want to be traveling at the same time as everybody else. Oh, Torrent, hey, thank you. Well, we're doing a peacock, so it'll be really, it should be peacock colors <laughs> when, we're, when we're done. This is, um, this is what we're doing. I showed it earlier in the stream, but this is what we're gonna be painting today. Oh, you think they're not gonna open up travel for two years? Or you think it's not going to get busy for two years? So Torrent, we were just, um, I don't know at what point you came on, but uh, Flux lives in um, England and like mid England. And we were talking about London because he used a word, and actually, Torrent, you like um, you like linguistics and stuff, so you might be interested. I know this is a semantics thing, um, but he was talking earlier about how he was going to get a bacon cob this morning, which is a type of roll, um, but he said rounder and more crusty. And because I didn't know what it was, and but he said that that is a Midlands word that, um, like a Londoner probably wouldn't know that word. Like I said, I don't know where you came in in the, the conversation. So then we started talking about travel, and next time I get to go to London, of course, if I go to England, maybe I should go to the countryside, go somewhere other than London. I mean, I guess I'd have to fly into Heathrow, but. And how are you doing today, Torrent? I don't know how late you ended up streaming last night. Uh, Torrent was streaming and I was watching for a little while last night and then I had to go to bed since I'm, I've become quite the early bird for bed lately. It's because I stay up late other nights and then I'm too tired. And I've also had several very exhausting days. You just joined in right when you said you limit your travel after they lift restrictions. Well, that's the thing is that um, I, what I was mentioning earlier to Flex was just that I think even when travel is restricted, I'm probably still not gonna wanna travel because it's gonna be, everybody's gonna wanna travel. It's just gonna be busy, I think. There's gonna be a lot of tourists everywhere. So if you live in a touristy area, then good luck. I don't, I live in Tallahassee. Nobody wants to come to Tallahassee unless they have to for school or because it's the capital of the state. Otherwise, there's no reason to come here, honestly. I don't really wanna be here. <laughs> All right, now I'm running out of this green, so I'm gonna have to try to remake uh, the this color which is not great um 
You went for six hours? Oh my gosh, you guys and your marathon streams. Ugh. I just, I don't know. I can't focus for that long. Um, but I'm glad you had fun. I have been good, just busy, you know, now that I actually have a, a social life. But I was mentioning earlier, my mom's back in town. And so that means that I'm going to have less of a social life because um, my, my friend will not be coming over to visit. <laughs> Torrent knows. Okay. So I've got the yellow. Remember we mixed white in with it earlier. So we need to try to recreate this green. All right. So I'm going to do a little bit of white and mix in the yellow. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. Thank you for reminding me. Cause I actually had forgotten about it. I would have remembered like next time I was on somebody else's stream and I saw the CC, I would have remembered that. But, uh, I had forgotten too, so. Oh yes, my friend. Okay, very little bit of blue. Remember, you, you hardly want any blue in there. Like blue goes a long way. Yet, technically, okay. See you in a little bit, Flex. Um, technically, Judah, you've met my friend. I mean, uh, in sort of in a way. That okra was good, by the way, that fried okra. Let me tell you, he can cook. It's nice to, to, uh, be dating a, someone who used to be a chef. I need to get him to cook for me more frequently. So far I've cooked more for him. All right, so I needed to mix a little bit more blue, but I think I'm pretty close to the color I was at before. Okay. So what I did to get this was yellow with a little bit of white and a little bit of blue. And hopefully we're close. I don't know, that looks pretty close, y'all. But definitely now I know a new way to make fried okra. And it was quite delicious actually. A little little spicy, which I like. Uh, it caught me by surprise at first. I didn't expect it to be spicy. But it, it was good. Um, I would not say it was the best in the South. Um, I still like my own okra better, but I mean, everybody kind of likes their own cooking better, I think. Or at least if you're a cook, you know, if you're, if you actually cook, I think like there's something about your own cooking cause you know exactly how you like stuff. Um, but I also make it completely different from him. So it, it's, it's not even, they're not even comparable really, other than the fact that it's both using okra. Um, but it, it was pretty darn delicious. Um, but he did, I would say he did live up to his standards because, um, to me, fried okra is really hard to get right. I think like when I go to restaurants and stuff, it's so rarely done correctly. So, um, I would say that it was one of the best in the South for sure. I know that's not what he said, but I'll give him, I'll, I'll give him one of the best. You think that was a spot on paint mix? Uh, if not, you'll get a slight gradient, which wouldn't be the worst thing. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> It's helpful to remember how you mix something. Um, when I'm doing, so now this applies more to dye. Um, but like when we do, when I'm like creating a dye, in fact, 
I'll show you guys my my little sketchbook. So see, here's some colors. I actually write down, like that's what's in purple here. So like this was an acid dye, so I used a half a cup of turquoise, um, a quarter cup of lemon yellow, and a quarter cup of water to make this color. So like that way I can recreate, um, I can recreate it every time. Now this, I just remembered how to do it. But of course, you know, if you're working on a project, that's actually a good recommendation. If you're working on a project, like a paint project or something that's gonna last over several days, write down how you get your colors. Cause it's a lot easier than trying to figure out how you did it. Now I happen to be pretty good at eyeballing color, but um, that's just because of years and years of doing it. Um, in fact, I had friends in school, like especially with dyes and stuff, um, that they weren't sure how to get a certain color, so they'd give it to me and have me mix their colors for them. Color mixing is actually one of my favorite things to do. It's the most artisty looking sketchbook you've seen. <laughs> Thank you, I think. <laughs> it is a very artistic looking, like with all the flowers and everything. Oops, and I went over that a little bit. Okay. Um, up here, it's a little, because I was running out and so I was using, um, I was trying to use a little bit more water to spread it thinner. I, like you can see through it, which isn't a bad thing because we're going to be put layering enough stuff on it, but I'm just going to go ahead and clean up some of my, some of my areas that look like maybe a little more splotchy. And don't worry, this will actually dry a different color. Then, so it should blend a little bit better once it's not wet. So it looks like there was probably a tiny bit more blue in my previous mixture. But that's okay. As Torrance said, um, there is, it'll just make like a little bit of a gradient and it, it won't look so bad. Plus this is gonna be covered up a lot. Okay, but we are gonna be using this green to make another color. So I don't want to use it all up. Oops. Okay, close enough. Let's see if there's any other spots. Maybe right along the peacock. Okay, so what we're gonna do after we finish cleaning all this up is we are going to um, add a little bit of yellow to our green and we're gonna create a lighter color. We're gonna add a little yellow and a little white. Okay, I'm gonna clean my brush. Okay, cool, sounds good. Gotta take care of those baby ducks. All right, so. Excuse me, just a moment. All right. So let's add a little yellow. And I'm just gonna put yellow in its own thing since I already, since I already changed the yellow that I had there. So we're gonna do a little bit of yellow. Maybe like, I don't know. It's a good scoop of yellow there. I'm gonna clean off my palette knife and I'm gonna grab a little bit of white. Again, a pretty decent scoop. And we're gonna lighten this up. Okay. 
and it should make like a really nice like key lime color. That's what I'm trying for. Okay. So now I've got this like kind of key lime color. I'm going to pick that up. And now what we're going to do is we're going to actually go around the outside of our yellow. And this is where we're going to pick up any areas that um, maybe didn't get completely covered. I think this was still a little wet on this side. We might have to start on the opposite side. I'm going to start over here because I think it was still a little wet over there. So what's happening is it's blending. Okay, so I'm just going along the outside of the yellow. Now in some cases, the, the, the bottom side or rather the side that's facing toward the peacock is smaller. And as it goes around the outside, you can let it be a little fatter. So, the, so basically when it's facing away from the bird, you can just let it get kind of fat towards the top. I may need to lighten this up a little bit. It is not as light as I thought it was when I mixed it. I don't know, we'll see. So, we're just going around, going around surrounding the yellow with this lighter green. And again, you can make uh, the part that's like kind of away from the bird, you can make that like a little bit more of a um, like egg shape where it's a little bigger, a little fatter, and then make it kind of thinner at the bottom. Like I said, when I say bottom, I mean the point that's closer to the bird. We're also using this as a way to cover up any kind of areas that we missed when we were painting the darker green on any little white spots that got missed. I'm generally painting around the outside of the yellow, but like I said, if there's any parts that got missed or if I need to paint inside the yellow a little bit, I'm doing that just to like clean things up. Oops. 
Let me get a little water on there. It's starting to pick up too much paint, which means it's not smooth enough. I'm like really it's not getting smooth enough so I just need to pick up some more water and I went ahead and took that opportunity to clean my brush since it was starting to get up into uh, this metal part here and that can mess up your bristles so you want to try to avoid that you want to not that's called um, loading the paintbrush sometimes someone will say overloading the paintbrush and all that means is that you've gotten too much paint on the paintbrush and it will it will go up into your um, into the metal part and it can destroy the bristles the other problem with loading the paintbrush is that then it will sometimes just plop big old fat globs of paint on your painting where you did not want them uh, and it, it makes it less even so every once in a while you want to just clean off your brush when you're doing especially if you're doing points it just kind of reinvigorates the point of your brush We're almost done. We're getting there. This particular painting, more than any of my other paintings, I think really, has a lot of repetition, which means that there's a lot of like kind of silent moments when you're just focusing on, just focusing on what you're painting. So unfortunately, it makes it so my chatter isn't isn't as good as it normally is. So these I had already done. I'm going to go over them again because they were very light. I think they had mixed in. The colors had mixed in a little bit with the, the darker green paint that was there. Uh, similarly, I'm going to just go over these ones on this side just a little bit. I don't know why, but for some reason they just went on quite a bit darker. It was just these first few. It could be, it could have been that the way I had mixed my paint is that um, it wasn't mixed as thoroughly at the top. These could just be drying darker too. Could just be drying darker. That's entirely possible. Paint does usually dry darker. All right, well, that's about all I'm going to do with that. Then, let's see. Let's do, okay, so we're going to take a little bit of pure blue, and we're going to start making um oh welcome back flux we're gonna start making like little little bumps
and they're going to be covering each other. Uh, meaning that like so th they'll be staggered a little bit and they can kind of go outside of your um, peacock tail. This is part of why I did the bumps on the outside. So I'm, I'm following the bumps on the outside a little bit. I'm trying to do these lines as thinly as possible. And they should get bigger as we go up towards the top. Conan the Destroyer. Yeah. That's old school Schwarzenegger. Good stuff, man. So I'm getting bigger. Now, here's a little trick because we don't want to get to the point So our top, we want our top, you know what? We can actually probably just make the top a little bit thinner if we have to. Have you read the Conan books by any chance? Cause that's, I read those first when I was little. All right. All right, so right at the bottom of these inside here, we're gonna put this green. So we're painting right over the top of, of um, the little blue area. And I'm just doing like a little arc of green or like a little line of it. So I'm just doing almost like a little rainbow and then filling in the bottom part with green. Little green rainbow. You're setting a reminder on your dual. I can't say that word because mine will wake up. Um, that's funny. Now I just asked if you had read, if you had read any of the Conan the Barbarian books. Like, I read those when I was little, well before I ever saw any of the movies.
You read a few comics. I just read the books. I didn't even know there were comics. I mean, that makes sense, though. It's Conan. All right, so we're almost done with the green. Just little stripes of green, or in some, some of the bigger cases, I do an arch of it. Okay. Ah, very cool. They're the same story. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we need to make the kind of orangish, brownish color. Um, all right, so let's see. What we're gonna do is mix a little bit of yellow. With a little bit of red. And we're gonna mix in some brown to muddy that color down to where it's more of a creamy color. So I'm gonna pick up some brown in there. And then we're gonna add white. And I'm probably gonna need more white than what's there So, Marvel owns Conan, um, so, oh, so, so he went to Dark Horse and then back to Marvel. All right, here's what I'm going to do. Um, I am out of white here. We need quite a bit of white for this. So I'm going to pick up a pretty good chunk of white. And this is going to make our like beige color, kind of like a beige. That might have been a little too much white, but that's okay. We're going to make it work. Oh, I'm sure, especially when the movies came out, I mean, I assume that they were I don't know, when did the movies come out? Was it the 70s or 80s? So what we've got here is this kind of orangish pinkish color. And actually I want that to be a little bit darker. So I'm gonna bring in a little bit more brown. Oops. All right, that's better. It's still pretty light, but it's better than it was. Destroyer is 84. Okay. Yeah, the 80s. All right, that's what I thought. All right, so now we're going to take this color that we just made. And we're going to do some stripes. We're going to start just a little stripe right over the top of the green that we just did. Try not to cover your yellow too much. All right, so we're just covering just a little stripe across the top of the green there. 
go in whatever direction the green went. So if you did like an arc with the green, then do an arc with the, ooh, I missed a green there. That's okay. We'll just pretend that there was one there. If it's just, if the green's just a stripe, then just do a stripe. And sometimes I'm, if my green was taking up too much, too much real estate, then I just paint over the green a little bit. All right, so we've got that on there. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to paint a circle right in the middle, or well, rather an oval right in the middle of our yellow with this same color. And remember, it can be fatter on the outside than on the inside. And I need to get a little bit more water because this is really not going on well for me. All right. I'm just going to turn this Okay. Oops. So like I said, this is more repetitive than most of the other paintings I do. So we're just doing a lot of, of um, same thing over and over again, which, you know, I mean, I guess it can get a little boring or you can look at it as meditative. But whatever it is, it keeps me from talking because I... I kind of just get into a little trance of just doing the doing the thing. So the next thing we're going to work on is the head and like face and stuff. While we let this stuff dry here that we're doing now.
Okay. So while that stuff is drying, we're going to start on the, um, the face. Now, we're going to take some white. And actually, you know what? I, we probably should get some clean water at this point. But I already started. So I might get some clean water here in a second. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is very lightly, I'm just going to do some, like the little lines coming to the top of the head. Okay, and then we're going to do the beak. And so how we do the beak is down at the bottom, we're gonna do like a little, um, it's like a little hill. I'll show you. Like maybe, I'm trying to think what that could be like. I don't know, this is the, this is the little hill part. And then there's another little hill there. I don't really know what to call that. And then it's just going to curve down. The beak is going to curve down. Now there's two parts to the beak. So there's going to be this first part. And don't worry, we can go over that. And then there's this second little part. I didn't get the shape of that right. I mean, the top part shape is fine. Excuse me. Okay. Let me see if it's still wet. If I can grab, get, it is. It's still wet. So I'm gonna grab that, and then I'm gonna actually bring this in here. That is way more curved than I want it to be. There we go. That's better. So it's kind of like there's this like hump like right in the middle of the beak that goes up into the bird's face. Okay, thanks for letting me know, Flutz. All right, so I'm gonna get some more white and we are going to, let's see, we're going to do a line that goes, it's gonna be like almost like a smile going to go underneath. It's going to like curl up like the letter J a little bit, but it's going to curl up a little bit here. Now, don't get any new paint on your brush. We're going to do a little dot right maybe about the middle. And then we're going to do a line coming from one side. And a line going to the beak. Then we're going to do a little, still not getting any new paint on your brush. We're going to do a little kind of semicircle around. Man, I messed it up. I still had too much paint on my brush. All right, hang on, because we want this to be very light. What we might have to do is mix a little water, which I kind of did, but I'm going to do it so you guys can see. OK. 
Okay. And I just messed this all kinds of up. Hold on. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take the, I'm going to take some white into the middle here and get a bunch of water and just make it really watery. And it's a little, it's a little um, green because my, my water is green. So you can't even really see it. See right there. It's really watery. I'm going to take some of that. That's what I'm going to do a little semicircle around the eye. There. I'll hold that up so you can see. So this little kind of half circle right around the eye. Now I'm going to take this white and we can do some more stuff with it. And I'm going to, oops, maybe I want that to be full white. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I'm just going to go ahead and clean this up. We can always make some more later. Okay. Now I'm going to go over the beak again with white so that it's really clean. And I just messed it up again. And I'm like struggling with this beak. All right. All right, I need a new paper towel. That one is pretty dead. All right, and I'm going to clean up the lines, this line here on the outside of the bird's face. You can do a little bit of cleanup on the inside one, but you don't have to do much. It's, it's lighter. It's meant to be lighter. Okay. I'm going to go ahead, too, and do some white lines. We'll do pure white rather than the watered-down white. Um... I'm just trying to go lightly. I'm just doing some little lines there. That one was a little thick. That's okay. You can either try to clean it up if it's too thick, or you can just leave it. Because ultimately it's not going to probably be noticed. Okay. Oh, I forgot some down here. Okay, that's good. Oh, we're not even gonna see that one. All right, so now we're gonna mix our blues.
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a lighter blue. So I'm going to pick up some of my blue. I'm just going to put it over here. And I'm going to pick up pure white. And what we're going for here is kind of like a... Um, Well, I guess this kind of blue, like kind of an electric blue. Oh, cool. That sounds nice. All right, so I've got like an electric blue going here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our electric blue. And we are going to do little ovals down at the bottom like across the bottom of uh, the kind of uh, brown part here. I'm turning it as I go so that my hand doesn't get in the in the blue. Also, my paint on my face isn't totally dry yet, so I'll be honest, I'm not sure what a poke gym is. I just figure it's a, like a, like a gym with I don't know, like what I think of as a regular gym. Oh, nope, it certainly isn't. Pokemon Go, there's actual gyms there for Pokemon Go? Wow. That was not at all what I thought that was. It's a battle place. I'll be honest with you, I don't know very much about Pokemon Go, so, I mean, I understand a little bit of what it is, and I understand that Pokemon is, um, like, my nephew has the cards, so, like, you know, that you can, like, battle Pokemons against each other. You put a Pokemon in it, three teams fight over control of the gem, so you battle over them. Ah, okay. Well, that makes sense. And it's called a gem. But I assume it's not like a huge place. Or is it? Oh, it's virtual. Okay. Well, that explained it a lot better. <laughs> I was thinking of this like actual place, like gymnasium, you know, where like the a big building where everybody gets together and battles with Pokemon Go.
All right. I guess virtual is better anyway right now with the the current COVID stuff. Okay, so we've got all of that. Now what we're going to do is we need to make some kind of uh, fluffy bits on the head. So we're just going to take the blue and I'm just going to I'm just making little dotted areas. This is going to be its crown. I'm trying not to put my hand in, in the other blue here. So I'm just kind of dotting it. All right. Then I'm going to do the same thing up at the top. I'm just dotting it. Just making like, I forgot what the crown is called. It's called something. Maybe it's just called a crown. I'm trying not to make it too even trying to make it so that there's, you know, it's kind of got an uneven look to it. Okay. Now we're going to take the black that we made earlier and I'm going to get a little bit of water and get some of that on the end of my brush. Then I'm going to very carefully draw a line. I'm hardly putting any pressure to the end of the mouth there and then a little line for the nostril. All right, we're not done just quite yet. Now we're going to get our regular dark blue and we're going to do a couple of things. First of all, we're going to come in here and we're going to dot some dark blue in here, especially down at the bottom. Then we're going to take we're going to do little oops, not little lines. They're almost more like dots than lines. I'll hold them up and show you. All right, now we're gonna take our dark blue and inside the lighter blue here, we're going to do little circles. And you know what? I actually want to mix. I'm going to mix some. Hold on. I'm going to take some of my dark blue and I'm going to mix it in with my lighter blue here. So that we get a darker version of that. I think that'll look better personally. Let's see. I need it to be way darker than that though. Yeah, there we go. That's a nice peacocky color. Okay, so what I did was I took that lighter blue and I just mixed some of my pure blue in there. All right, so now let's pick up some of that. Let's put that in the middle. Oops, I didn't mean to cover that. I just covered that whole thing. I'm just like going to town, not even paying attention to what I was doing.
All right, let's try that again. We don't want to cover the whole thing. We just want to do a little, a little circle inside of it. So a little circle inside of the blue circle. And that's it. Oops, I was picking up the wrong blue. Now my lighting, I don't, these aren't showing up as well. So I'm going to hold this up so you can see it. So you can see that there's that darker blue inside of the, the lighter blue. All right, almost done. The last thing we have to do is put our peacock lines in there. Like all the, I'll show you. So see how there's all these like little lines in this? That's what we're doing next. So I'm just gonna bring some water into the middle here. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of that blue that we just made. Can water it down a decent amount. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start, uh, oops a little bit too much on there. We're going to start surrounding. Let's see, we'll do an outside one first. You're going to basically, that might be too watered down. You're going to surround with wispy marks. Oops, I didn't mean to go right across that. And some of them will overlap each other. And that is okay. I may have a little bit too much water. I'm going to mix in a little bit of the, my um, darker blue. There we go.
So I need to redo these ones up here at the top. Well, that's okay though. It'll just look more layered. So we're just doing little blue flitty lines around. It's got a little bit of paint on my, there we go. So Flex, did you um, compete today? You said you went to you just did the virtual gym thing. And try not to hit your beak or anything like that. I did accidentally paint on the beak earlier. Bacon and coffee, fueling the rampage of decimating your enemies at the local duck park. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right. Uh, looks like I missed a few. Hold on. Oh, I'm getting low on my blue. I don't want to make more because I'm almost done. So I'm just trying to make do okay I think I got them all I think I got them all right I'm just gonna wipe out that blue once those those are the fastest to dry so they're the hardest to clean out okay so I'm done um oh no I'm not either Hold on just do a little bit of that blue with some water. And we'll just do um, just inside the uh, inside the the, this top part here I'm just kind of going over and that just kind of lightens some of that it it wasn't a thing that was like super important but I wanted to do it because we're being technical okay all right now we're done looks vibrant thank you okay now we need to sign so I'm going to use a gold paint pen you can hardly see my name. I might have to sign with a black paint pen. Do I have a black paint pen? I do. Oops. There. <laughs> Struggling with the paint pens today. Okay, so just a little critique before we finish up. Uh, what I like to do is I encourage everyone to say one thing they think is effective and one thing they think is ineffective about their painting. Um, 
One thing is I would probably make the bird, and let's see, here's the reference image. I mean, I did all right, but I would probably, I make my colors a little bit different. Like see in this one, this, these blues are very different from each other. I think I needed to make that other blue a little bit lighter. Um, hmm. I don't know. Other than that, I mean, I honestly, I think they're pretty, pretty close. I could have made my blue areas a little bigger too, um, in the eyes, but I think I did all right there. Um, I actually, my favorite part is this here, the, the fluff on the head and the, um, whatever those things are, the crown. Uh, that's, that's probably the part that I think is the most effective. Um, Flex said, do you ever finish art really just a touch here, a splash there, a line here? Yeah. I mean, really, I don't, I have to, with these classes, I have to basically say, nah, it's done, you know, and just call it. But you're right. Like with my own artwork, I'm almost constantly working on stuff. The only time I ever really finished artwork was for, um, you know, where, when it was due for a class or something, because, you know, if it's not finished, the teacher you know, we'll let you know, or, or like for a show, you know, cause I've had some art shows and stuff. Um, so I think that was important to have it finished, but, but yeah, you're right. You're never truly finished. You're always, especially in painting, there's always something. Okay. Well, since discord's not working, normally what we would do is anyone who was following along, I would encourage you to upload to discord and we would go over and take a look at your work. But since Discord, my, the server was down earlier, I don't know if it still is, but um, then we're just gonna go ahead and call the stream. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you joining me and um, I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday. We will be doing a drawing uh, at 7 p.m. So thank you and have a good night.